It seems that everyone can't get enough of blue sky at the moment and in this no code tool video I'm going to show you how you can take your first step to building an app for blue sky users to ride that wave of popularity. So here's my blue sky profile if you want to give me a follow I'm at mattblake.uk and we're going to be using this guide here it's part of the blue sky docs and we'll be using CURL because that's the best way that we can use bubble which is the no code development platform that I've got hundreds of videos on this channel about and you can check out more and our courses at planetnocode.com but we'll be using this guide and we'll be using bubble.io to build a very simple like I say a first step uh, for building an app that posts to Blue Sky. In fact, we will conclude this video by posting to Blue Sky. So we need to take this and plug it into our Bubble app. So I'm in a Bubble app that I've used for many Bubble tutorial videos, uh, and I've just created a new page and it's blank here. I'm then going into plugins, and this will be empty for you if you just started uh, a new Bubble app, um, but you need to install the plugin called the API Connector, and you can just find that. Um, by searching in the plugin directory for API Connector. It's the most popular one. It's made by Bubble themselves. Um, and then you won't have all of these, but this is just an idea of what you can do with Bubble. You can web scrape, you can integrate in with it, basically any LLM that's got an API, Grok, OpenAI, Claude, etc. Uh, you know, we emails, send emails, you can do all of that. But we're just going to add in a new API and call this one Blue Sky. Uh, and scroll down we're going to make an api call and this is where the practice of how do you plug a third party api into bubble you basically have to flick backs and forwards between your bubble app and work out where to plug bits in uh, according to the api documentation now actually compared to other social network platforms that use a process code called oauth which uh is frustrating to say the least in bubble if you want to use an oauth service i'd suggest checking out our videos on path fixed on how to do that you can actually authenticate a uh, app specific password that uh, a blue sky user can generate in their blue sky account uh, and then you can use that to authenticate or at least create a session that leads on to how you can authenticate posting so we need to do two steps here we need to create a session and we need to create a post so first of all we create a session uh, so if I go back into my bubble API connector I'll say here create session okay and I'm going to change this to action because I'm not using I am using it to fetch data but I need it to be an action in a workflow so that I can run this each time I need to authenticate my user into uh, blue sky so that they can post to their blue sky profile uh, and then if i go back to here we can see that we send a post request to uh, this endpoint but uh, we need to select the pds host one of the big things about blue sky is the like the decentralized nature of it i believe for most users the pds host is going to be uh, blue b sky dot social uh, so it needs to be bsky.social and then you take the uh, the endpoint end that comes from the uh, API documentation. Uh, we then need to look at, well, what are we doing with it? We are sending across two bits of data, the identifier, which is the blue sky handle and the password. So this is not the user's password <coughs> that they use to log into their blue sky account. It is an app specific password, which they generate in the settings security section of their app. So if I copy this across uh, and um, paste it into this section here, if you don't see this section, it's because you've not got post, you've probably got get still. Um, and so the my blue sky handle is mattblake.uk and the password, the app specific one, and part of the strength of the app specific passwords is that your user can create many of them, each for different apps, and then they can delete them. So I will be, of course, deleting, uh, oops, let's bring that back up. Uh, I will be deleting the app specific password. Uh, I'm just finding it on my clipboard, here it is. Uh, and I believe they added a V at the start, there we go. So I'll be deleting this before publishing this video so that you can't do things with my Blue Sky account. Uh, I'm then going to initialize this call and this is basically our way of checking that everything we've done is correct and also it's training Bubble what to expect as a response. 
Um, just, just do one last check of the documentation. All oh, right, you'll see that it, it suggests that we send, or rather a requirement is that we send uh, in the header of the call content type application JSON. Now we don't actually need to specify that in Bubble anymore as of a few months ago, that's the default unless you state a different content type, you override the, override the default. So after initializing the call, we actually want to be using this data here, which is the access uh, token here and the refresh token because if we go back into the documentation we can see that we need to authenticate our post with the access token okay uh, so let's go back into uh, our bubble app and if you click raw data and scroll down that's a better way of getting access to the full thing because we can see that it's it's sort of been truncated here. I'm not doing that because there's data in here such as my email address that I don't want uh, to be so public. Uh, so click show raw data and look for the access um, token and copy that onto your clipboard. Now we've got our access token, we can set up our post. So this is us posting a message to Blue Sky. So I'm going to say post Blue Sky and it's once more a post request in terms of the API documentation. How do we know that? Uh, because we see it here. So we've got to take this and translate it into our bubble app. So we can already update the end point. So this time it ends with create record. So if I take the same endpoint here, copy it in and replace this last bit with create record. Once more, I'm going to make it an action because I want the user to click the button and it's an action that follows on from that and then I'm going to set up the rest of the body content. So this is what it wants me to send across. But you'll notice that it's got a lot of escaped characters in it. What I mean by that is that it's got all of these backslashes. And so actually you have to remove these backslashes. You could just Google and look for like remo remove escaped characters from uh, JSON, that would do the trick but it's almost just as quick for me to just demo the full process to you here. Okay, now the created at uh, needs to be in a particular date format. Let me just look up what that needs to be and I'll direct you there. Okay, the format needs to be ISO 8601 and so I'll just copy this bit from here because that's the current one because this is from the documentation, it's kind of dynamically inserting it in. I'm just going to insert it in as text. And then I need to update my Blue Sky handle here, mattblake.uk. Obviously, if you're creating this for your users, you'd make that dynamic so they can insert their own handle in there. And then the last bit for here is that we need to authenticate the call. So we need authorization in the header bearer access token. Now, often when you're building an app in Bubble, the authorization bearer API key access token is going to be one that links to your account. For example, if you're adding AI into your app using the OpenAI API, that's going to be your API key. And so you would need to insert it up here because it needs to be private. It's private to you. It's not something you share with your users. But in this case, your users are using their app specific password to generate the access token. So you don't need to hide it from them. And in fact, you need to be able to insert it in dynamically. So it's bearer and it's not private so they can insert it dynamically. And then let me just fetch the one that was generated a moment ago in the call above, there we go. Uh, right, so I now think that we're ready to try this. So let's initialize the call and see what happens. Okay, I've made a typo. Let's try again. Here we go, so we've got status valid. That looks very good. Let's head over to my Blue Sky profile and refresh it. And there we go, hello world, I posted this via the API. Now we can successfully post to a Blue Sky profile. Let's add in some simple UI to allow a user to do a similar thing. So I'm gonna delete this from my Blue Sky and head over to my Bubble app. I'm gonna click save to teach Bubble what a response looks like from a successful call. And we'll go into our design editor. Now, if you are actually building a serious bubble app, you would never use fixed layout. You'd always use rows and columns to layout your content. But because I want to be quick, I'm just going to use fixed layout. So I'm going to add in an input and I'm going to say that this is my blue sky handle uh, and then copy and paste that. And then I'm going to say that this is my blue sky app specific password. 
I can even format that as a password. And then I'm going to uh, have my message. So actually that's going to be a multi-line input. So this will be the content of the post. So I'll say type the post content here for Blue Sky. And then lastly, I'm going to add in a button and say uh, post. OK. If I click preview, it's going to take me to this page in my bubble app and I'd be able to view the content on the page, which looks just like it does here. But let's build in our workflow first. So what do we need to do first? Well, if we go back to our API Connect, we need to uh, create the session. But we want to make the identifier dynamic as well as the password. So I'm going to highlight this and I can add dynamic values into the bubble API Connect using triangle brackets. So I'll say handle. And notice that I'm removing the speech marks because I'm going to apply a text modifier in the workflow called JSON safe, which means that if there's any punctuation that could be misinterpreted as part of the code, Bubble escapes it. Remember, we looked at those escaped characters before it adds a backslash in. Bubble can do that automatically for us. So let's take the, I'm going to copy that again to my clipboard, which is, I've got it there. And then I'm going to delete it and, and add in password. OK, and for this to work in my bubble app, I need to have uh, they're not private because it's not something that I am protecting for my users. My users are providing this information so they can have that exchange between their browser and the bubble app. I don't need to reinitialize now. If I did reinitialize, I'd get an error because there are no values in handle and password. I'd need to add them back in within speech marks in order to do that. So I'd create the session. Uh, let's go now to our button. So the first thing we want to do is create the session. And I've got lots of junk here from previous Bob tutorials, but we can see that I've got blue the guy create session. It's labeled like that. And if you don't see it, it's going to have something to do with how you've labeled it here and here, and also whether you've successfully initialized it and you've got the use as set to action. They're all required in order to see that in the workflow. So I'm going to say create a session. And then here's where I pull in data from the input. So I've got the, the blue sky handle. And here I make it JSON safe. And here's the blue sky password. Uh, what did I call it? Yeah, we go. So uh, blue sky app specific. That's the password. And I would make that JSON safe. OK. And then I'm going to now add in the create post. What did I call it? Or post. OK, and so I now need to pass in the uh, the token. Remember, if I go back here, we take the, the access token. I need to pass that in in this point in my workflow. So I need to go back in. So basically, I'm probably going to use arbitrary text. And here's why. Arbitrary text just allows you to combine dynamic text with plain text. So by adding an arbitrary text, I can write in bear and then insert the text after. You could probably squeeze bear and a space in there. It doesn't really make much difference. OK, and then get my access token. There we go. And then if I go into the API Connect, I don't want to just replace everything in this message or the body section. I just want to replace specific bits. So I want to replace the handle. And again, I'll make that JSON safe. Uh, I want to uh, replace the created at. And I'll make that JSON safe. So created at. And I want to replace the text. And that too needs to be JSON safe. So I'll just call that text. So now if I go back here, they need to be made not private again because I'm not protecting this data from my user it's, it's data that my user has free access to anyway so now if I go into the workflow I've got all of these options so I can get my handle again from the previous one and say JSON safe created that I'm going to say current date time and then just see if I can get the right expression out of bubble. No, so bubble gives me a Unix timestamp. Uh, what if I say formatted as simplified extended ISO? I think that's going to be just fine. Once more, this needs to be JSON safe. 
and then my uh, post. Multi line inputs, text, also make that JSON safe. Okay, so uh, let's give this a try. So I'm going to click preview, open up in the app preview, and we'll give it a test. Let's fill in the details. So uh, it's mattblake.uk. Then I paste in my app specific password, which is there. Uh, and then I'll say, uh, here is a post from a no code bubble.io app I made in 30, in, in 15 minutes. Okay, now if this doesn't work, I'm gonna keep it in the video and I'm gonna debug it, but I'm fairly confident that it will work. So let's click post and see what happens. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, maybe that did work. I just, I, I thought in my mind that there was something that I could have done wrong, but I think maybe this has worked. Yes, there we go. I actually thought that there'd be some authentication issues. I thought that there might be other problems, but there we go. Here is a post from a no-code bubble that I, I made in 15 minutes. So there you go. That is the basics of how you can um, add a blue sky integration so you could build like a buffer clone from this point on but remember you would extend this further by uh, things such as you would authenticate your users you'd have them register into your bubble app they wouldn't have to provide their handle and their app specific passes every time you can do all of that in bubble and we've got hundreds of videos and you can check them out in the link in the description because they're all on our website uh, and we've also got bubble courses uh, if you want to make a chat GPT clone I've done a course on that so you can find out all of that and really Really accelerate your learning and development of no code apps by clicking the link down in the description.